Well, I'm really excited about what I'm talking about today and I hope you get excited too. I thought I had an understanding of the gospel, but new revelation is just coming all the time and I realise now, looking back, really I was only looking through a bit of a mist, <laughs> of a cloud, um, and it's clearing all the time. It's clearing more and more as I'm getting more and more revelation and I hope that you get excited too. Yeah. So this appears on my daily news feed Facebook and every time I see it, it gives me the irrits. <laughs> Can anybody figure out why? Is that what you really think about your relationship with God, that first sentence? I hope not. I hope God doesn't see us as failing him daily. People think it's a really spiritual, religious thing to put up there, but I just it just really churns me over to think that people think that, that they're failing God daily. Well, I had a, uh, we were, uh, I spoke at another church over in the western suburbs only a couple of weeks ago, and the the girl that was introducing me got up and she said, "Oh, you know," and she virtually said this, and I was going to preach on this. <laughs> I fail God daily. <laughs> what, Rob, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, but you know, she just lives like wonderful young married woman, dynamic, and got a definitely got a ministry call on her life, and and she just feels like that that God, she's failing God daily. Oh, let's get out of that, folks, and let's let's learn what God really says. And you know this scripture, two Corinthians says, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation, a new creation. The old creation did fail God daily, but we're new creations now. We're a new creature altogether. We're not that failing creature anymore. The old has passed away. Can't make it any clearer than that, can it? So that's what I want to talk about today. Behold, the fresh and new has come. That's what you are, fresh and new. That's what I am, fresh and new. But we're constantly told by songs that we sing and uh, little messages on Facebook or little daily Bible readings or books that we read that we're unworthy. Have you read that? We're unworthy and, and, that, and that we're sinners saved by grace. And so you walk around as a sinner. That's why you're feeling it's sailing, failing God daily because you're walking around as a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm saved by grace, thank goodness, but I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And, and that's not the way God looks at us at all. That's not his, his thoughts over us daily. This is what he says. God put the wrong on Jesus, who never did anything wrong, so that we could be put right with God. And we're not sinners saved by grace. We're put right with God. I hope the, 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 the cloud that, that, you know, that I've had on me, that lifted, if you've had that cloud, I hope it's lifting too. You might have already known all this. You can have a little snooze if you like. <laughs> but sin has been permanently dealt with and we've got to realise that. When we look at Christ, you know, it says, in him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So in Christ was everything of God and what are we? We're complete in him. So we've got everything of God, everything that we need is already there. And we look at him and we see how wonderful he is and that's us. That's us because we're complete in him. Colossians 2.10 says that. I love that scripture. Um, one church that we went to, the, the, this earnest young man got up and he was taking communion and he, and he read this scripture out. And, you know, he said, this is, this is us. And this is what he read out. You know, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And he said, that's us, he said, that's us. And your sins have hidden his face from you so he doesn't hear. That's us, he said. Our sins have hidden God's face. And for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue mutters witness, wit, uh, uh, wickedness. How do you feel about that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm like that little old man. <laughs> oh, terrible. And, you know, it's in the Bible. It's got to be true. Not talking about us. And it's Old Testament. It's Old Covenant. That's not us at all. You can't just grab a scripture out of the Old Testament and say, well, this is, this is life, this is what it's about. So he made us feel all dreadful before we took communion. And uh, had, had his understanding was so limited, precious God, godly man who, who loves the Lord and really wants to serve him in every effort. But, you know, this is just not the way it is. Okay, so a lot of Christians are living, trying to becoming something that they, they already are. 
trying so hard to be sinless, trying so hard to be right, trying so hard to be pure. We're all that already. Asking for things that we already have. So many of our songs do that. Oh, give me love, Lord. What? What's Romans 5, 8 say? The love of God is shed abroad in our heart. Give me faith, Lord. He gives us that, you know, all these songs are so, uh, um, there's so many, Rob and I are looking at it like, like a magnifying glass at the songs that we sing now because we realise as we're singing them, we're saying stuff that's totally unscriptural. So many songs are just so wrong. Hymns that we used to sing in the past and modern songs today. Just keep on emphasising that Old Testament, that Old Covenant, that sin nature, that all the things that we haven't got. And, and I'm, I'm not on it anymore. Uh, you know, I, sometimes because we're, we're in different churches, every, you know, nearly every Sunday and, and, and Rob and I will be singing the word, praise and worship and then we'll just kind of look at each other and go, hmm, <laughs> don't think I can sing this a little bit. <laughs> Um, we, we don't want to get self-righteous about it, though, and think that we're no more than anybody else or anything. That's that's hideous and horrible. But um, th- in this area, perhaps we have got a little bit of revelation, but that doesn't mean to say that we're the be-all and end-all of everything. Um, thank you to this wonderful man of God called Tony Rawson. <laughs> he uh, recommended this book to us, and it's a free download. How good can that be? And when I read it, my hair nearly went on end, you know. It's a bit hard for curly hair to do that. But, you know, it, it just absolutely, and so much of the stuff that I'm doing today comes from that book, so I want to give credit to it. You can download it for nothing and read it. He's just, just a young man in South Africa, and he's got this amazing revelation of who we are in Christ. This is what, you know, so many Christians try so hard to be better. I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better daughter. I want to be a better wife. I want to be a better worker. I want to be a better Christian. And I've just got to try. Oh, I didn't do so well yesterday. I'm going to try today. I'm going to be better. It doesn't work that way. You can't do it in your own effort anyway. It just makes you feel wretched. Oh, I must pray more. Oh, you know, I heard, met this woman and she prays for two hours every day. I've got to pray more and I've got to read the Bible more. I've got to witness more. Oh, I haven't witnessed to anybody this week. What does God think of me? Oh, goodness, I've got to give more. I haven't been giving enough. That's where I'm going down in my life. I've got to do something about that. I've got to try harder. And all the time we're just living in the law. We're living in the old covenant. We're living in the Old Testament. And, you know, you might have a heap of grace and just a little bit of law. And you know what that equals? Law. Law. And you can live in law if you like, but it's a miserable way to live. And, you know, even though I've been taught about the new creation message all my life, thanks to my father, who did have a definite revelation on it, but he still didn't have the full knowledge that we're getting more and more and more into this. And I still realise that I was living under law, teaching law and being law. But when Jesus said, it is finished, it finished. And do you know what Ryan Sletcher says? You might think this is heresy. But he says, when Jesus said, it is finished, it's finished. (laughs) No, that's not the heresy bit. What he said was, what Jesus taught in the Bible, a lot of it was Old Testament and Old Covenant because he hadn't yet died. Shocking thought. But we've discovered that some of the things Jesus said were the law. It was still the law because he hadn't died yet and it it wasn't finished. And in actual fact, that's why there's a bit of a contradiction between some things that the apostles wrote when they really had got this revelation. And not that Jesus didn't have the revelation, but those people were living under the law because he hadn't yet died and it hadn't yet finished. It's a bit of a shocker, that one, isn't it? You've got to get your head around it. Now, so we're saints, okay? We're saints. And you're not anything else but a saint. And you know Paul in those letters, what did he write? He wrote to the? Yeah, 50 to 60 times he said saints. Did he ever say, well, hello, you sinners. I just want to write to you. And Tony's going to come out and he's going to read this fabulous scripture that I love so much. And he was a radio announcer, so he has a beautiful voice. Beautiful. I'll put on my Stan Rowe voice. Uh... 9 to 11 Uh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God do not be deceived neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters nor adulterers nor men who practice homosexuality nor thieves nor the greedy nor drunkards nor revilers nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God and such were some of you 
but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Beautiful. Such were some of you. I love that bit. It's a bit old-fashioned, but I love it. Such were some of you. So Paul's writing to the Corinthians, and they were adulterers, and they were doing all these wrong things. And yet, what was he calling them? Saints. You're justified. Yes, I love all those words. But he was calling them saints, and he knows very well that they were, had been living lives of sin and probably were still struggling with it and probably still hadn't come through in some things, but he was calling them saints because that's how Jesus saw them. So... Trevor, <laughs> it's Saint Leanne, you know, and we shudder a bit and we go, oh, that's all very well, you know, there are people here that probably are saintly, but I'm not, because I, I told a lie yesterday, or I, I swore yesterday, or got angry yesterday, and all those little voices come into our mind, but that's not God, he says, no, you're a saint, you're a saint, you're a saint, just like Paul called those people in the Bible were no more holy or religious or righteous than you are. Those people that Paul kept saying to the saints, to the saints. So it's to the saints. You're a saint. And act be what you are because that's what you are. You're holy. You're God's masterpiece. You're blessed by God. You're a priest, he says. You're his inheritance. Spotless, blameless pleasing to God, seated with him. So the heading down there says, we're, we're often we're trying to be what we already are. Oh, such a relief when you get hold of this. <laughs> you see, we, you know, Jesus, uh, we try and put, we put ourselves down. We think it's humble. You know, somebody will say, oh, they, you know, you, you, you sang really well. And you go, oh, it's just all God. Well, that's not true. If you've had singing lessons and you've practiced a lot and you've performed your art and you've listened to other singers and tried to emulate them, and it, it's not all, I'm sorry, but it's not all God. You have done a lot of hard work to get where you are. And, and just to, to say it's all God is not saying, well, I've got a gift. God gave me a gift. I've got a gift. I'm gifted in that area. I can uh, thank you, Lord, for that. But while we keep putting ourselves down, it's like we're saying to, to the, the artist created us. That's a picture there. But, you know, the artist creates something and, and then we, like God created us. And then we keep saying, oh, it's not me. I'm not real. I'm really bad. And, and I'm, uh, you know, I should have done it better. And I did it. You're, you're really putting down the creator because he created you. And he thinks you're beautiful and he thinks you're wonderful and he thinks you're gifted and then he thinks you're great. And when you keep saying, oh, you know, not really, it's, you're, just, you, you're, you're actually um, putting down the creator. So we should hold our head up high and say, well, thank you so much. Thank you. That is a gift. It's a <laughs> it's <o> <laughs> I will. <laughs> it's okay to be gifted because God gave you the gifts anyway. So, and, and don't keep saying to yourself, oh, I'm so bad, uh, you know, because you're putting God down. You're putting your creator down. He doesn't see you as bad. And you're not being humble and modest, and, and, and that, which is the Aussie way, you know. No Aussies go around saying, oh, I'm really good at that. It's not considered culturally acceptable. It's acceptable in the Bible. So often we think, this, this, it's not really good on that screen, is it? 45 years yesterday. Oh. That gorgeous young couple that are probably not recognisable today. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit dark. Yeah, it's, a, it's probably a good thing. <laughs> now, the point is, when you get married, 
You don't have a list of rules to get that relationship. You know, now Rob didn't present me with a list of rules and say, right, I want dinner on the table at six o'clock. I probably would have gone to you. Um, and my, you know, socks washed and my shirt ironed for the next day and all that. And, and, and you know, then, then we'll have a good relationship, you see. But I did all those things. I did actually do all those things. What a wife. <laughs> Freshly ironed shirt every day. Oh. <gasps> But we, I did it because I loved him. I love him to have his freshly ironed shirts and his, his uh, meals on time and all that sort of stuff. But I didn't do it to get love. And it's the same with God. We get into this works thing. And we think, if I read my Bible every day, God is going to be so pleased with me. He's already totally pleased with you. Totally pleased with you. He's not going to be any more pleased with you because you get up at five o'clock. You know, sometimes when we go to visiting churches, we go to to so many of them, and uh, they'll say, We've got a prayer meeting on and it's 5 a.m. And Rob and I kind of look at each other and go, What is most more religious about it being 5 a.m.? I mean, really, why couldn't it be 7 (laughs) a.m.? It it, it people kind of think if they, (laughs) well, I'm thinking of people going to work. You know, some people still work, Rob. But people sort of think if I suffer hard and, and get up in the middle of the night or get up in the early morning um, or have an all-night prayer meeting, you know, it's going to get me some brownie points with God. It doesn't happen that way because he already has given you all your brownie points. You're covered in brownie points. Have a look at them all. Brownie points everywhere. Stars everywhere. Stickers everywhere. It's all over us. Complete, perfect, righteous, wonderful, loved, a pleasure to me. All those things. And we don't have to do them to get loved. So we're striving to live up to a standard. You know, we just heard that somebody listens to praise and worship for an hour every day. And we think, oh, oh I don't think I've done that th- for three weeks. You know, oh, put a cross against that one. Are we striving to be acceptable to God? Are we striving to be pleased, to please God or to be loved by God? None of those things work. None of those things should be our aim. None of those things should be our motive because we're already all of those. We're already acceptable. I'm acceptable. You're acceptable. Can you say I'm acceptable? Can you say that? I'm acceptable. God's pleased with me. Say it. God's pleased with me. Don't let that little voice in your head go, oh, he can't be. Oh, look what I did yesterday. God loves me. God loves me. I mean, we know all these things, but it's got to get so deep in there that we don't get back into that works thing again. Works thing again. Somebody came to me just last week and said, but I've got this bad habit and I want to get rid of it. What should I do if I read my Bible more? I said, no, you're making laws for yourself. You're putting yourself under works. You're saying, if I do this, I this will happen. That, that's not the grace of God. That's not the gospel of the kingdom. It doesn't work like that. It's all work-based. Right. You've got to think to yourself, now, if I do this, does it point to what I need to do or is it what Jesus has done for me? Does it make you introspective? Oh, some people are so introspective. They go right into their spirit and they go, oh, Lord, take out each damned spot. You know, that's this quote out of them. It's all right, you're allowed to say it. (laughs) It's a quote out of Shakespeare. Um, You know, and that dark spot in my heart heart and and that thing that I did and that thought that I thought and and that song that I played and that book that I read and all those things and all we get right in there we think oh God get rid of all the sin get it all out of me there's even a psalm about it isn't there a song we used to sing um creating me a clean heart oh God whoa that's old testament I've already got a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I've got a right spirit within me. I didn't have to ask God to do that. Take not away your Holy Spirit. What terrible thing to sing. But it's in the Bible, people say. It's in the Old Testament, yes. But what did, what did God say? Hebrews 13, I'll never leave you. Never leave you. Never leave you. Matthew 28, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll always be there with you. You don't have to plead with me. Stupid song that keeps coming up on my iPod about... Um, Oh, God, Jesus is my brother. And it would break my heart if we should lose each other. Does anyone remember that song? <laughs> well, well, you know, don't even break your heart thinking about it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> dear, oh, dear. So it really depends on our motivation. I mean, it's good to do some of these things, but we're doing it under law and doing it because we think we have to and because we think God's going to be more pleased with us. Then we really got to 
got to get our thinking uh, more clear. So praying, for instance, and praying is a good thing. I'm not saying praying is not a good thing, but do you feel like you have to pray and if you don't pray, you'll have a bad day? I don't believe that. God's here is a blessing God and he loves you and he wants the best for you. Fasting. Fasting is a good thing. Personally, I hate it. <laughs> oh, a friend of mine went away for two days and fasted and I felt so guilty. <laughs> But if you're fasting to get something from God, that's wrong. It's wrong. It's your own effort. And, you know, it's that 2, Corinthians, uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, you know, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. That's, that's not New Testament thinking. If you look back in that scripture in, in Chronicles chapter 7, there were three things God said he would do over the nations. And then they were to humble themselves. I mean, they're not the three things that he's doing over the nations now. It's not even relevant to this era. But then it's works again. Humble yourself. Pray. Then I'll hear from heaven and forgive your sin. Is, is that Old Testament? Can you see that's Old Testament? It's not what Jesus came to do. He came to break the power of sin over us forever. And you see, I don't have to, to do it to, to get it right because I've got God's nature in me already. Reading the Bible, you know, uh, when you first become a Christian, they say, now you have to have a quiet time. I don't know why they call it that because mine's a bit noisy time, really. <laughs> but you have to have quiet time, you know. You need to spend time every day seeking God. Well, I've already got God. I'm not seeking him, okay. And, and you have to have every day. And if you don't read and, and pray, you know, things won't work out the way they do. And when you have a good time with the Lord, it'll be a better day for you. Law, law, works, works, works. Why do we read the Bible? Because we love spending time with God. Because we love his word. That's the motive. Because I want to do it. Not because, oh my gosh, I haven't done it three days this week. And I'm sure Pastor Noel will ask who read their Bible. I won't be able to say I did. All that kind of thing. So, reading the Bible, studying the word. Look, it's wonderful stuff. But don't do it because you have to. Because if you think you don't, you'll have a bad day. All that kind of stuff. Seeking God. As I said, he's already there. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says that. Don't do it as a religious duty. Positioning ourselves for God. Well, I'm already full of God. Giving. You know, once again, it's a wonderful thing. But if you give because you have to. For years, I tithed because I thought, oh, if I don't, I'll, you know, the devourer will come. You know, Malachi says that I'm robbing God. And I must give my tenth. All the calamities of calamities will come upon me if I don't. That's all Old Testament and law and bondage. You know, we give because we want to give and it might be above 10%. Sometimes it might even be below 10%. You know, I feel that sacrilegious to say that because I've been brought up so strongly on having to tithe. But, you know, it is an Old Testament concept. It, they're rules that we make up to please God, but he's already pleased going to church <laughs> let me tell you this the best i read this the other day and i think it's so true the best gift you can give to your pastor is to come to church every sunday that is the best gift you can give to your pastor that's true and i'm not going to deny that but if you come to church because you think it's going to earn your points eternally <laughs> stay home doesn't work that way. You're in church because you love it. I can see that's why you're all here, isn't it? Because you love it. You want to be here. Not your head quickly. Because some of you aren't. <laughs> you're worrying me. <laughs> communion. We can be so religious about communion. You know, I know at times Rob said, look, we're having a preacher coming when we were running pastoring churches. And he's going to have a long prayer line afterwards. We know he will. So we'll, we'll cut out communion. And people go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So religious, so religious. What does it matter if you don't have communion one Sunday? Oh, but the Bible says you should do it every time you meet together. Well, did you have it last Friday when you had six Christians around for dinner? I mean, just don't get into law about it. And, and you know, the communion table is such a story about where you're allowed to put the communion table. When, when we went one church to pastor, it had to be right out the front out here. How, many, how long have I gone for, Noel? Oh, I won't tell that story then. Um, it's a great story, though. <laughs> no! 
having fellowship, that sounds all religious, begging for more blessing. We've already got blessings. We're seated in blessings. More of God. You know, Ryan Sletcher says, if you keep asking for more of God, you'll have more of God than he's got himself. <laughs> It doesn't work that way. But what does Colossians 2, 9 and 10 say? Rob's going to look it up because he, he, he knew he was going to have to look something up. It's all Old Testament, all those kind of things. Rules to please God who's already pleased. Colossians 2, 9 to 10. Evangelism. I've got to get out and evangelize. You have evangelists come along here and he's, all, he's just wonderful. He gets out in the street and he talks to people about Jesus and you think, oh, I've got to be like that. Oh, I'm not, I haven't won anyone to Jesus in the last year. Sometimes pastors ask you that. Who's won somebody to the Lord in the last year? You can't put your hand up and you think, oh, what have I done? You know, it's all law if you're getting like that way. Okay, so let's read Colossians 2, 9 to 10. I love this scripture. For, for in him all the fullness of the deity dwells in bodily form, and in him you have been made complete. He is the head over all rule and authority. That'll do. Okay. Thank you, darling. So beautifully read too. He was a, had a radio ministry too, Tony. Spiritual gifts, uh, with songs that we sing like saying, come to us. What? He's in here. I can't sing that. He's in, you can't get any closer. Let your presence fall. Well, his presence is right in here. And that, that's another thing we got religious about was churches. You know, so some churches I say, children, you're not allowed to run in the sanctuary because it's God's house. Excuse me? What's God's house? Point to God's house. Right here. Right here. <laughs> okay. Take not your Holy Spirit. We talked about that. God removes his presence when we sin. Does he remove his presence when you sin? People used to preach that. But actually, it's the other way around. When sin abounds, grace abounds more. Isn't that wonderful? His grace abounds even more. Do we go to church to meet him? You know, and people get up and say, well, let's just sit, uh, pray the prayer to welcome the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay, now this is one classic. Oh, this freed me so much and I am winding up soon. Um, I preached on forgiveness a lot over the last 30 years. Oh, I had this caucus sermon. I loved preaching it and I ground everybody to law into the... And I'd say, if you don't forgive, Matthew 18 says, you'll be handed over to the torturers. Yes, that's what it says. And if you don't forgive, you know what will happen? God won't forgive you because that's in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us as we forgive. Uh, as You know what it is. <laughs> yes, that's it. And thank you. And uh, the thing is, it was, uh, it's Jesus teaching in the Old Covenant. And so we used to think that if we didn't forgive, God wouldn't forgive us. Have you been taught that? Yeah, probably by me. <laughs> I'm not teaching that sermon anymore because this is not the way it is under grace. You know what? The difference is in Colossians 3.13. We, because we are forgiven, we forgive. See, I used to forgive... Oh, I was so scared that if I didn't forgive, God wouldn't forgive me. So that was my motive. Oh, my gosh, that woman who hurt me, I don't think I've forgiven her. Oh, God, I'm going to forgive her real quick now so you'll forgive me. No, God has forgiven me. He's poured out his forgiveness at the cross. He's forgiven me. And so now I forgive. Can you see the difference there? It's completely different from law to grace. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So we do forgive, but we just say, Lord, I know I'm holy. I know I'm righteous and I know I'm forgiven. We, we don't go, oh, wretched man that I am. Thank you that I've been already forgiven. And don't keep beating yourself up about it and get into condemnation because what you're trying to do is take the sin. That, that's Jesus on the cross. <laughs> um, he took the punishment. Why are you beating yourself up about it? Why are you getting all guilty about it? Why are you feeling so bad about it? Why are you feeling so condemned? It's not that way. Paying wages to earn the gift, which already comes. But you see, his yoke is easy, the Bible said, and his burden is light. And we don't have to go around with this dreadful burden of sin that we're coping with day by day and trying to fight our way through it. That's not the way God sees us. He sees us as... <laughs> <laughs> mm, computers do funny things he sees us as holy as righteous 
as pure, as perfect, as blameless, all those wonderful, wonderful things. And I just want you to close your eyes right now